Well, dear children of God, good morning. Good to be with you today. You can see behind me that we've changed the color a little bit. We have entered into our Lenten season, and so we have the color purple out now, the color for Jesus' passion. And you can see the, the cross up there as well, even with the, the crown of thorns on the top. As this time of year in particular, we're being mindful of Jesus' suffering and, and his death for us to bring us forgiveness and new life. Even as we look forward to celebrating Easter and his resurrection from the dead, and in fact, every Sunday throughout Lent is a thanksgiving, a celebration of the resurrection, even as during the days of the week, which add up to 40 days in Lent, we remember especially Jesus' suffering and his death for us. As we have been hearing lately, uh, we've learned about how Jesus called his disciples, those 12 disciples, and then how he started to show them who he was. So in John chapter 2 last week, we heard about his miracle, how he changed water into wine, right? Showing he is Lord of creation, that he can do things that other people can't do. He's the Son of God. Well, today we're going to hear more from John chapter 2, uh, this account of Jesus clearing the temple which might be a little bit strange to hear and see how Jesus acted in, in this particular setting. It's not usually how we think of him, but it's also an important part of him showing who he truly was. There will be some words that you'll hear again that might be new to you as usual. Uh, the first one is the Passover, and the Passover was an annual celebration that happens just about around Easter time for us now every year. Uh, but the Passover in the Old Testament was connected with the Israelites being brought out of Egypt from slavery. Right? It involved painting the blood of the lamb on those doorposts. And then after the Israelites were freed from Egypt, God asked them to celebrate that, to remember that every year, the Passover. Money changers. Money changers is another word, and, and those were people who were buying and selling things in the temple. You'll hear about them. Zeal. Zeal means you have a, a passion for something, a strong desire to, to do something. That's zeal. Consume. Well, consume can be when you eat something, you take it into you, consume it. Uh, we talk about fire, burning something and, and consuming it consuming it. But as people, we can also be consumed by thoughts or, or ideas or activities, for example, that, that take up our time or, or ideas that become very important to us and we're passionate about them. So that is consume. And then sign. Sign is uh, when you show someone something. You give them proof of something. Okay, so those are some words that you might come, well, you will hear as I read for you today, uh, and you can think about those. So first, I'll let you see the picture there, and believe it or not, that guy there with the whip and looking kind of upset, well, that's Jesus, and if Jesus is upset, we know that something really bad must be going on. So let's find out in John chapter 2. The Passover of the Jews was near, so Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons. The money changers were sitting there too. Jesus made a whip. He drove them all out of the temple. He drove out the sheep and the oxen. Jesus poured out the coins of the money changers. He overturned their temples, their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. You know, what, what were people supposed to be doing in God's house? What do we do in God's house in church? We pray and praise him and hear his word. And here the people were trying to make a profit. So the Jews said to Jesus, What sign do you show us for doing these things? In other words, who gives you the authority to do this? Who made you the boss, Jesus? 
Jesus said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple. Will you raise it up in three days? They thought he was talking about the church, the temple, where they were, the building. But Jesus was talking about the temple of his body. Hmm, destroy my body, and in three days I will raise it up. Later, Jesus was raised from the dead. His disciples remembered that he had said this about the three days. They believed the scripture. They believed the word that Jesus had spoken. When Jesus was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many believed in his name. They saw the signs he was doing, but Jesus did not entrust himself to them. Wow, there's a, a picture there of Jesus at his resurrection too, showing himself to the women. But boy, look at the difference in that picture. He's not so happy there, is he? As he was driving those people out, people selling, the, the money changers. And remember, he was upset because they were not doing the things in God's house that it was intended for. They were not praying and praising and worshiping God and, and hearing his word. Instead, they were being greedy and turning it into a marketplace. And so Jesus told them that that was wrong. And the occasion of that event also gave him opportunity to point forward to why he had truly come to the earth. Remember, the people asked him, Hey, Jesus, who gave you the authority to do this? Right? Who made you the boss? And that's when he could tell them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will build it again. And we heard there he was talking really about his body. right? Because as you see behind me again, remember on that cross... Jesus was crucified. His body was broken. His life was taken from him. He gave up his spirit for us to pay for our sins. But then three days later, he rose again from the grave. He came alive again, and because he lives, we get to live too. You're baptized into Jesus' death and into his resurrection, which means you don't have to die for your sins. He paid that price. And instead, you get to live with him eternally with the life that he has earned. All right? So that account of Jesus driving out the money changers and cleansing the temple, that's pointing forward to that work Jesus came to do for you and for me. Let's sing a little song about that because that work of Jesus in today's account also shows us that he is the Son of God. And so we're going to sing that today uh, to the tune of, Do You Know the Muffin Man? But instead we'll sing, Do You Know the Son of God? That's the first verse. And then the second verse is, Yes, I Know the Son of God. And the third verse is, Jesus is the Son of God. And at the end of each verse we sing, Who Died and Rose Again. Okay? So it goes a little bit like this, and you can join in as you're able. Do you know the Son of God, the Son of God, the Son of God? Do you know the Son of God, who died and rose again? Yes, I know. Yes, I know the Son of God, the Son of God, the Son of God. Yes, I know the Son of God, who died and rose again. Jesus is. Jesus is the Son of God, the Son of God, the Son of God. Jesus is the Son of God, who died and rose again. And he is the Son of God who died and rose again for you, to bring you forgiveness and life as well. Let's go ahead and finish up with prayer this morning. 
If you can bow your heads and close your eyes, fold your hands, I'll say some words and you can say them after me. Dear Jesus, your church is a special place. Please help me to listen to your word and to learn more about how much you love me. In your name I pray. Amen. All right, well, thank you for joining me today, and the Lord Jesus be with you this week.